the idea that the Endangered Species Act uh, was responsible for alligator re recovery is a myth. There's no question about that. There's renewed uproar tonight over that hunter who killed Cecil the lion. Earlier this month, Cecil was lured out of the protected park with bait. Then he was shot. Worldwide anger over his illegal killing. By the internet went on an outrage bender after a well-to-do American dentist shot and killed Zimbabwean icon Cecil the lion on a trophy hunt. He went into hiding for a while, but when he returned to work a couple months after the incident, protesters were still camped outside of his office. I see that man and I just want to slap him. He is just disgusting. Killing big, beautiful, endangered animals is a cultural taboo for most Americans. But what if it's a belief that does more harm than good? What if the truth were that when governments legalize hunting and trade of valuable animals and move it out of the black market, it actually helps sustain their populations? As it turns out, that's exactly what happened with one iconic North American predator, the American alligator. I think alligators is a unique animal because of the value of the skin and meat and because it's a reptile as well. People are more accepting of us treating them more like fish. Those people that are most interested in the conservation of alligators in many cases are those who depend upon them for their livelihood. Ellen Woodward and Tommy Hines ran the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Alligator Conservation Program and were largely responsible for the wildly successful management of the state's alligator population. A key element of their strategy was a willingness to work with hunters and traders to save the alligator. But it was an approach that rubbed some environmentalists the wrong way. I kind of separate preservation from conservation. The preservation groups early on wanted an all-out ban on alligator hunting. Sometimes on humane ground, sometimes on uh, emotional ground. Um, they just absolutely oppose harvest of wild animals. Alligator hunting is now widely practiced and accepted, and even the subject of reality TV shows like Swamp People. But it wasn't always this way. For decades, proponents of wildlife preservation have touted the Endangered Species Act as the savior of the American alligator. The story of the American alligator is one of both drastic decline and complete recovery, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It is truly one of the prominent successes of the nation's endangered species program. The idea that the Endangered Species Act was responsible for alligator recovery is a myth. There's no question about that. Hines points to his own field experience and a number of studies as evidence that the alligator population was already stable and growing by the time the federal government listed it as endangered. A survey estimated Florida's alligator population to be higher than 400,000 and more than 700,000 nationwide the year that the feds listed it as endangered. A majority of U.S. counties reported stable or increasing populations. The best population data comes out of Louisiana, which found a huge increase in nests between 1970 and 1980. Biologist Ted Jonan determined that a spike in such a short amount of time couldn't have been due to the 1973 Endangered Species Act since gators take a full 10 years to reach sexual maturity. In fact, listing the alligator as endangered may have actually hampered Florida and Louisiana's efforts to create a well-regulated and monitored market and trade because it prohibited them from setting reasonable hunting and harvesting quotas. The last Endangered Species Act was somewhat problematic. To get alligators off the endangered species list required a lot more information than it did to put alligators on. We weren't able to get them reclassified until 1977, and by that time we were having major problems with nuisance alligators in the state. It was another seven years to eight years before we were able to get alligators reclassified to threaten due to simulative appearance, which allowed us very broad in management approaches to alligators, which included general harvest for recreation and commercial. If listing the alligator as endangered wasn't the real reason for its comeback, what was? Hines and Woodward credit state-level management in the 60s and an amendment to the century-old Lacey Act, which created a legitimate interstate market in alligator hides by mandating that hides be tagged and tracked by the states. And it did so a full four years before the passage of the 1973 Endangered Species Act. When the government focused its efforts on enabling a legitimate, flexible market, the results were stunning. 
landowners suddenly had an incentive to maintain alligator habitats. In Florida, about 40% of alligator harvests happen on private lands. And in Louisiana, that number is closer to 90%. The income that's derived from alligators provides us somewhat of an incentive for private landowners to maintain those wetlands. And those wetlands are used by a lot of aquatic birds, um, other aquatic wildlife, reptiles and amphibians, and some mammals as well. So making something positive out of the alligator also helps a broad array of other uh, wildlife as well. Our alligator management and research budget is somewhere around $1.5 million. The revenues we get from alligators probably are somewhere around $2 million that the, that the state actually gets. While the alligator might be unique in that it's both valuable and less sympathetic than more cute and furry animals, Florida is just beginning to grant licenses to hunt another large valuable animal, the black bear. And it's already provoking emotional backlash. This is no more than a trophy hunt. Just a way to get a new head on the wall, a rug on the floor, or a paw as a paperweight. But if the American public is willing to learn the lesson of the alligator, they might see that commerce and conservation are not enemies, but allies. And that maybe sometimes you have to hunt them to save them. The whole North American model of wildlife management is based on the idea that sustained harvest is not only possible, it's a positive because it's generated a tremendous amount of funds to go back into conservation, to go back into wildlife research. There was just a recent controversy about Cecil the Lion, and then I saw one just the last day or two about the largest bull elephant that had been taken in Zimbabwe for years. The truth of the matter is that big bull was a problem of no value to the elephant population. He was of much more value to the country and to the people of Zimbabwe by letting that German hunter take him. The idea applies over there in Africa probably as much as it does anywhere in the world.